Ugh, my phone's been acting up lately. I can't see your information radiator. I'm telling you, this test's gonna fail. But why? Are you sure this is the same unmodifiable collection we got from the controller? Well, I think so. If we pass in a new runnable... New roller. New roller. Stream transmission imminent. Might want to consider a lambda instead of that runnable. Oh my god, these stream alerts really get on my nerves. Just because we have lambdas doesn't mean we can't use a runnable now and then. In fact, I prefer runnables to lambdas. There, I said it. Ooh, shots fired. You, my friend, need coffee. Hey, Dave. Meet me out back after work. Out back? What for? We got some mutual friends. Friends? Which friends? No, Louise is a sweetie when you get to know her. It's that metal door of her office. You know the way it slides open? That thing's got some heft. It could do some real damage if it caught you. Oh, I never thought about that. Have any other managers got sliding doors? Hello? Oh, sorry. I was miles away. So I noticed. You know, it's the oddest thing. This morning over breakfast, I was thinking back to a street near my apartment a couple of years ago. And? Well, that's the thing. I was just remembering that street and nothing else. This is your anecdote. What were you doing there? Well, nothing. I remember being there, but not going anywhere or doing anything. I thought my life was boring, but sitting around remembering empty streets is a new benchmark. The thing is, I was just thinking about it again, right now, for some reason. You work too hard. Hmm, I had a bad feeling about this. I have a bad feeling about this stupid phone. Dave! I knew you'd show! I nearly didn't. This is weird. What am I doing here? And who are they? It's about your coding. I overheard you talking to that structure guy. You were saying how you prefer runnables over lambdas. Is that true? Coding? Is it true? Sure, I prefer runnables. Mostly. Not that I have anything big against streams. They're just easier to misuse. Harder to use properly. What if I told you that we're a group of like-minded people who want to return to the old ways? We don't want these fancy new paradigms ruining everything we built. Return to the old ways? Yeah, you know. We want for loops and variables declared so we can see types. Explicit runnables. Proper code, see? The way it used to be. Look, I, I, I don't know about this. Hey, no problem. All we want is for you to think about it. Here, switch on your Bluetooth. Switch on my Bluetooth? Yeah, we got a gift. It's a video. Take a look. You like what you see? Then we'll talk. Consider it... An introductory offer. I, I don't know. Come on, it's just a video. What's the harm? Well... It's a large file. We don't skimp on picture quality. And there we go. Wasn't so bad, was it? Hey! Who's there? Hey, you! Stand where you are! Imperativist! <sighs> Oh my god! Morning, Dave. Oh, this will be good. What? You must practice looking guilty to look that guilty. What did you do? Well, good morning, my fine programmers. How are we all today? Have an interesting evening yesterday, did we? Shepard, how's corporate security these days? Oh, wonderful, thank you, sir. Wonderful. So, uh, do anything interesting after work, Mr. Science? Uh, meet anyone interesting? No, I was at home playing Dark Souls. What's all this about? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just making sure my fine programmers are well rested in their time off. Uh, not, uh, you know, uh, associating with undesirables. Associating with undesirables? Oh, yes, Miss Structurus. Undesirables. Undesirables of the most heinous nature. Coding Luddites. Digital reactionaries, if you will. What are you talking about? 
I'm talking about imperativists, Mr. Structure. Imperativists. We've had reports of a den of imperativists festering right here in our glorious company, spreading their filthy lies and diverting innocent programmers from the true path. True path? Yes, Mr. Science. The functionalist path. Streams, maps, filters, parallelism. Is this a Java 8 thing? Why, yes, it's very much a Java 8 thing, Mr. Science. And where were you last evening, Miss Structurus, just after leaving work? I went home. Can anyone confirm that, Miss Structurus? Look, it's none of your business. Ah, so no one can confirm it. Hmm... And I'm afraid it is my business, Miss Structurus, very much so. You see, one of the conditions of your employment is that you write the best code you can for our company's wonderful products. And, of course, if you're not using streams to the utmost, well, I'm afraid I don't really see how you're writing the best you can, do you? This is ridiculous. Oh, ridiculous, is it, Miss Structurus? Well, if it's ridiculous, then how do I have a witness? A witness willing to testify that he saw three imperativists at an illegal open-air gathering last night at around 7pm. Would you call that ridiculous? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is just coding we're talking about, right? Well, maybe to you, Miss Structurus, maybe to you. But to some of us, coding is professionalism in its purest form. You know, people around here seem to have very high opinions of you, Miss Structurus. But me? I'm not so sure. I'm not sure of any of you, because that's my job. Master Dave, sir, you've been very quiet. Just listening. Respectfully. And didn't you set off a stream alarm yesterday, sir? Look, that was nothing. Anyone can do that. It was a temporary debugging printout. Well, if you say so, Mr. Structure, if you say so. Just, uh, don't anyone leave town without telling me, eh, Miss Structurus? Leave town? Unbelievable. That guy's been bugging me since he started this job. I know. And now this. Imperativists. I have no problem with a for loop now and then. Depends on the circumstances. Like your case yesterday, Dave. Dave? Um... Dave, where did you go yesterday after work? And why did you come in looking all sheepish? Well... It was you! You met with imperativists. Oh, here we go. I didn't know who they were. A guy from verification and integration just said, meet me outside. But Shepard is a witness. Did you see anyone? I don't know. A security guard showed up A security guard showed up? I panicked and ran. Well, this is quite the pickle. He's new here, but one thing I know about Shepard, he's dogged. I need a coffee. There's more. They gave me a video. A video? What kind of video? A, uh, you know, imperativist video. An imperativist video? Oh, an imperativist. Imperativist video. Did you watch it? Just the start. It's pretty hardcore. And high definition. And over two hours long. Well, if that's what you're into... It's not what I'm into. Look, this will all blow over. Relax. Have a runnable. I'm going to join Structurist for the coffee. Amazing. Put a security badge on some people and they turn into the town sheriff. I just did it again. What? I was remembering that empty street. Something's not right. Look, I need you to join me. Join you where? In a memory lambda. A memory lambda? Yeah, it's a software construct for exploring memories. Where on earth do you get these programs from? This one's from an old war. An old war? The war against the Zarks. Who are... Look, do I even have to ask? They were a race of AI from the Galactic Core. They attacked us in our memories, so we had to weaponize Lomptus to fight back. Look, I need you to come with me into my memory. You can take me into your memory? Sure. Ready? Oh, I'm pretty sure I'm not ready, but whatever. Let's go. Uh, how do we go? Lambda! 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 Oh! That was... unpleasant. 
So are we actually in your memory? Uh, the street I was remembering is just around the corner. Is there anything I shouldn't do here? Is this real? Don't worry, nothing you do here carries back to the present. There's no mutating state. This isn't JavaScript. Good. Is any of this shedding any light? Nope. Still nothing. But something's not right. Something's definitely out of... place. Okay, how are there so many of you here? I have no idea. Are we all remembering this street from a couple of years ago? Oh no, this is only last year for me. 18 years ago for me, at least. Seven for me. 22 for me, if it's a day. Well, I remember being here two years ago, but I don't remember taking a memory lump to here. Last year to remember it from the year before. So you're not from my timeline. Are we all remembering the same memory, but from different alternative timelines? Looks like it. Okay, this is going to get complicated. Can we all select unique numbers? It's great to see you again, Structure. It's been a long time. What do you mean? Well, in my future context, you've, well, you're not around anymore. What do you mean, not around? I'm afraid you died. I died? How did that happen? No, wait, Structures, maybe I shouldn't hear this or something? Isn't it wise not to learn about my future for some reason? Alas, that is true. Gaining knowledge about your future is very dangerous. Because, oh, I'm just kidding. Let him have it, ladies. My structure died in 2022. He slipped on a banana pill and hit his head. My structure died in 2025. He fell out a window while he was drinking coffee. My structure died in 2027 when he was vacationing in Brazil. A gas explosion in his hotel apartment. The explosion didn't kill him, but flung him into a piranha-infested river, where he contracted blood poisoning. He died five months later, when he was hit by a bus. Okay! Look, we need to find out why all of us are remembering this particular street at this particular time. There must be some common thread. Does anyone remember especially being here at this time? No? Nor me. Does it feel like an attack to anyone? I'm sure we're all thinking the same thing. Zarks? Zarks? They are the reason we developed memory lamptas in the first place. Well, it's not like a normal attack by them. They're usually much more obvious. Have the Zarks shown up again in any of your future timelines? And besides, there are no Zarks actually here. What do Zarks look like? They're small and sort of chubby, like this. Oh. Well, you'd certainly notice that thing walking around. Unless... Could they be camouflaged now? Maybe. We've just come close to one recently, and the memory lambda itself is trying to warn us. Have we come into contact with anyone new recently in our timelines? Hmm. Well, I do have a new apartment superintendent. She just took over this week. She really doesn't like me. There's a new member of our team just started. He really doesn't like me either. In my timeline, we've a new security manager in my job. He's really annoying. You think he's one of these Zarks things? I don't know, but if he is, it's really bad. They trigger an antimatter explosion before they're captured and modulate a final report back to their mothership on the explosion itself. It's a highly effective defense tactic. Antimatter explosion? Isn't that really bad? Yep, it can only be contained in a memory lambda, but nothing can contain the final report transmission. You can only jam it with another powerful transmission, if you're quick enough. So how do we find out if Shepard's a Zarks? There is one test. There's a sound you can make if you swing your tongue from side to side. They can't stand that. What? These powerful aliens are laid low by a tongue sound. Well, not laid low. But if you catch them off guard, it might help identify them. Okay, let's try it, Structure says. Get someone to make the sound and watch your potential target. If your target reacts, then get them into a memory lump to stat. We'll only get one chance at this, in each of our respective realities. So, we're facing a world-ending antimatter explosion. And I suppose it's too much to ask that my phone works in your memory. You know, this memory lambda has its own emergency technical hologram. He might be able to help. Really? Can I... Fire him up? Computer, activate the emergency technical hologram. Please state the nature <coughs> of the technical <coughs> emergency. <coughs> oh, it's a beta version. 
You know, the more I think about this, the more this sounds like work harassment. Dave, do you know what uulation is? Uulation? What on earth is that? It's a noise you make by throwing your tongue back and forth. Oh, sounds kind of fun. Listen closely, my young Padawan, and let me instruct you in its use. Oh, structures, I was hoping to take a quick trip to, you know, that place. I'm busy with Dave, but you go on without me. In the previous episode, we saw that science is the building of models that make falsifiable predictions of large-scale objective measurements. So where do we start when trying to use this science business to create better source code structures? Well, first, we have to define what we mean by better. What is the property of one source code structure that makes it better than another? What is source code structure quality? Science, alas, cannot help us here. Science is a measurement instrument, but it won't tell us what to measure. We have to begin instead with an arbitrary definition of source code structure quality and proceed from there, fully aware that we may have gone astray right from the start and chose the wrong definition. But we simply have to start somewhere, and at least we can be clear about our definition so that people can judge for themselves our investigation's validity. And the great Fowler, as we've seen, has already given us a perfectly rational suggestion in his classic definition of refactoring. A change made to the internal structure of software to make it easier to understand and cheaper to modify without changing its observable behaviour. So why don't we take these as the two defining characteristics of good source code structure? That it is easy to understand and cheap to modify. They might be wrong, but as this is what we're all refactoring towards these days anyway, they perhaps can't be too wrong. Except of course that there's an immediate problem. Science requires objective measurements and Ease of understanding is not an objective property of source code structure, but rather a subjective property of the observer. It has many subjective factors, such as whether the programmer was involved in writing the code, how long the programmer has worked with the code, whether the programmer had enough coffee that morning, etc. So this part of the definition must be dropped from the outset. It may be valid, but it cannot be easily scientifically studied. The other part, however, cheaper to modify, sounds wonderfully objective. Because whether a code structure on Monday has been modified on Tuesday is entirely a property of that code structure. No two rational programmers can disagree that new method X was added. They might disagree about whether the new method was necessary, but that's another subjective argument that we leave outside our scope of inquiry. Furthermore, we need to look at that word cheaper. We'll make an assumption in our modelling that cheaper essentially means fewer modifications, in that, given two different source code structures that deliver the same user experience, and given the same new features to be implemented over a large number of revisions, the source code structure that requires fewer modifications is superior. To t-shirt it up a little, if Mr Fowler doesn't object, our motto here will be cheap to change. If your source code structure is cheap to change, it's good. This is not perfect. We are not trying to build a perfect model here. As the saying goes, all models are wrong, but some are useful. We're trying to build an approximation, a model that will give us correct predictions most of the time. Though we of course accept that there will be outliers. Equally, however, if our model gives us wrong predictions most of the time, then it's garbage. We will measure, and we will know. Note that there are a couple of peculiar consequences of this choice of quality definition. It does not prejudge source code. That is, we've traditionally associated poor code structure with code smells, such as God objects, Liskov substitution violations, global mutable state, etc. But here, we'll simply measure how the code changes, and the one that changes least, wins. Slightly oversimplifying. And secondly, no frozen piece of source code structure has quality. When you check out code from Git, that revision alone has no structure quality. Instead, Quality is somehow a property of the evolution of source code structure over time, which is a little odd. Next episode, we'll start looking at how we're going to measure all this wonderful change. Then we'll have a chat with the project manager and integration and verification. We might as well get them all on board early. Sure. Oh, and structure? Don't forget the documentation this time, eh? We don't want a repeat of that last feature. Got it. Oh, and structure. Please don't play with the door. There's a good chap. Structure, are you okay? The door slammed into my arm and leg. Told you it was dangerous. Well, look who we have here. 
Just the three people I was looking for. Your presence is required in a lineup. A lineup? You mean like a police lineup? My witness says he got a good look at one of the imperativists last night, and you three are required. This is ridiculous. You have no right to do this. We don't have to. Of course you don't, sir. But you will, if you want to keep your jobs. Look, let's just get this over with. Yeah, well, you haven't heard the last of this, Shepard. If you'd kindly line up against the wall. Now, take your time, Bates. Isn't this supposed to be anonymous? Shouldn't you be behind a screen or something? You all know the drill. When your number's called, step forward and repeat the phrase you've been given. Understand? <laughs> Number one, step forward. Ditch the lambda and use a runnable, you dirty little code monkey. Number two, step forward. <laughs> Ditch the lambda and use a runnable, you dirty little code monkey. Number three, step forward. Ditch the lambda and use a runnable, you dirty little code monkey. Ah! It's him! Lambda, lambda, lambda! You'll never take me alive, programmer, and soon all Zarks will know your whereabouts. He's gonna <laughs> blow! Quick, he's transmitted his final report. We have to jam it. Do either of you have a large digital file I can transmit? Give her your phone! Now, if I can just transmit it with... Uh, oh my god! I didn't know what it was! Whatever. Transmitting. Doctor, is that a for loop in your method? Why, yes it is. And I'm gonna iterate all over this hat set, baby. First though, let me declare some throwaway variables. Ah, uh, Doctor, can you take that state?